Water drop photography is a fun and creative form of photography that you can do in your kitchen. All you need is a large mixing bowl, a way to drop some water, and ideally a flash unit as well, because this will freeze the flash. We'll come back to that in a moment. Optionally, you can also get some milk and some food dye if you'd like to color your droplets. It makes for a fun effect. So this is our setup. I'm gonna walk you through how we've done this. So we took a large mixing bowl and we filled it, let's say 97% of the way with water. And then I added just a few drops of milk to cloud the water. It doesn't need to be entirely milk. That'd be a, t a, that'd be a real waste and it's just not necessary. So we just added a little bit of milk and then I've taken perhaps a teaspoon's worth of blue food dye. This has colored the water and it makes it more interesting to look at than plain milk. To drop the water, I picked up a glass beverage container with a tap on it. You can get these fairly commonly and they usually, you put some lemonade in it, you put it in your fridge and then you can come along, open the tap and serve yourself a glass of cold fresh lemonade. What we're doing instead though is we're filling it up with water and we're opening the tap to allow drops of water to come out. It's very simple, it's very easy to use. I paid about $12 for this, it wasn't expensive. And the great thing about having a tap is you get to control the flow of the droplets. So if I open this all the way, a pour of water will come out. But instead what you can do is open it just a small amount and you'll see drops come out. Now it's coming out quite fast now, but we can slow this down by tightening the tap. Currently we're just dropping water, but we will be dyeing it with some milk to make it cloudy and some red food coloring. Let's talk about my camera setup now. So I'm using a 100 millimeter lens on the Canon EOS 1300D. The reason I'm using this is because it's a telephoto lens and it means that I can zoom in just on this little crop here where the water is going to splash. You can do this with the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. Absolutely you can do this. The reason we're using the 100 millimeters is it just allows us to be a little bit further away. And when you're splashing water and you're going to experiment for a few hours, it, you can also splash your lens. So just for the ease of creating this video, we're using the 100 millimeters. But like I said, you can do this with a basic camera and kit lens. Just zoom all the way in on your lens, probably around 55 millimeters if you're using a crop sensor camera. The camera settings I'm using are 1 200th of a second, F18 and ISO 100. The reason for that is because it's going to allow us to remove all of the ambient light in the room. That way we know that the only light that's going to be in our exposure is going to come from this flash unit. A flash unit is very concentrated and very powerful and it's just going to light the flash and the milky water. And using a flash allows us to freeze the movement. Now sometimes you'll see guides and they recommend using a shutter speed that's one thousandth of a second or one four thousandth of a second and that's based on the theory that the shutter speed is going to freeze the motion. The reality is if you have a flash, the flash is going to freeze the motion. I could set this to 30 seconds and so long as I'd removed all of the ambient light, a flash going off once at any time during those 30 seconds would freeze the movement, nothing else. It's nothing to do with the shutter speed when you're using a flash, it's the speed of the flash. So that's why a flash is perfect for this. It allows you to freeze the movement. The flash is set up to a power of 128th. So that is 128th the maximum power of this flash. The reason for that is because we just want a very small amount of light focused right in the middle where the splash is going to land. If I didn't have milky water and this was clear water and all we have around is black because I've removed the ambient light, that power would need to be a lot higher. It would need to be around one eighth power, maybe a quarter power. But that's the thing about adding water and milk together, it clouds the water and now that absorbs the light. Clear water will not absorb the light, but now that we have cloudy water, some of that light is being absorbed and we can turn the flash power way down. I've also set the millimeters, the focal length effectively of this flash 
to 105. So that's 105 millimeters. The reason we do that is if I go for 24 millimeters, which is an option on this flash, it's going to give me a very wide field of view and a very wide flash. It's set up so that it matches the field of view on your camera. I don't want a wide range of flash. I want one focus dot. So it's giving us a focus dot of light on this splash. Very easy to set up. Just change your power to 128, your focal length to just 105 millimeters, and you're pretty much ready to go. You'll also notice the positioning here. I've brought this flash so it's just peeking over the edge of this bowl. If I have it on the outside, the problem is it's going to light the rim of this and it's going to illuminate the whole bowl. I just want this focus of light on where the splash is going to land. And I'm also allowing the water to splash right at the edge here. So not in the center, but at the edge. And that's because of the composition I have set up with this camera. By setting this up so that the splash lands in the center, I can have a little bit of foreground and then the background is the rest of this bowl. So I don't see any of the tiles in the background. It just looks like I'm taking a photo of a puddle and it's pretty much impossible to know how big this surface area is. That's why we put the water drop here. So now I'm gonna take some photographs and when we've done taking a few test shots, we're gonna change the color of this. We're gonna make it cloudy and we're gonna add some red to it. And one more thing that's worth mentioning, I'm using manual focus here. I'm not allowing my camera's um, lens to focus for me. I'm taking control because I know that that focal point is not going to move very much. I'd rather set it myself, know that it's right, and then it never changes. When you're trying to manual focus, I suggest opening up the tap a little bit and letting lots of drops come down because then you know exactly where to focus and you're not waiting for a splash to come down. You can of course also use live view, but when you're using live view, you'll have to change the shutter speed so that you can actually see some of the light. With a careful and well thought out setup and a steady stream of droplets, you can consistently take photos. And even if you're not looking, you'll probably come up with a few good snaps. In fact, I would recommend just not trying to time the flash, just keep taking them. Because if you're trying to watch this and see when it's gonna land, the chance of you being accurate and fast enough is not going to be very likely. If you get it, you'll probably just be lucky. So you're probably better off just consistently taking photos and seeing what you capture. Because the skill here is not in pressing the button, but in setting it up the way it should be set up for consistently great results. Another way to experiment with the water drops is to increase the flow. So if I turn this up so it splashes a lot more, what you can get is some water splashes that come back up and hit another drop that's coming. Now this is obviously too fast, but it's about finding that steady spot where you still get proper drops of water that are maybe hitting each other. So I'm just gonna keep taking photos now. And there I'm getting a crown shape from one splash and a, and a little tower from another one, that's quite cool. The only thing I'd say that you need to be careful of really is some of these little bubbles that hit the water. I'm actually gonna take a chopstick and see if I can At least move them out of the way. Now that we've taken a bunch of photos with the blue cloudy water that I'm really pleased with, we're going to take this little vessel of water, we're going to add some milk to make it cloudy, and then some red food colouring.
when I get started, I'm going to open this just a tiny amount so that I can make sure I've got the drops in the right position. Then I'm going to open it up and I'm going to burst fire and get as many as I can before the colour of this water changes too much. It's looking really good, but what I might do is just add a little bit more food dye. I'm going to darken it further. That position looks perfect now, so I'm going to open this up a little bit. That's really cool. This is one of my favorite forms of photography because it's so heavily reliant on setup that as soon as you've got that hard work out of the way, all you need to do is press the button to take a photo and you can keep doing this and get new and interesting photos each time. No two photos will ever look the same and you can experiment with different colors too. We actually went back and we added more blue dye and more red dye to make the colors more vivid. It's a fantastic form of photography and I encourage you to give it a try. When you do, please leave a comment below with a link to your photo. Thanks very much for watching.